All right, so assurance of salvation. I'm going to do a little review. Last time we talked about four types of people. And there's, so there's four types of people, not just Christians, there's four types of people. Anybody know? David, any thoughts? Four types of people. There's people who know they are not saved for sure. People who think they are saved but are not. People who think they're saved. Well, let's see, what did I word? You're right. Who know they're saved but are not saved. So There's people that are what saved are, but they don't know, right? Saved but they don't know it, like David flying through a plane. If he died, he was, he's not sure. God knows. And what else? People that don't care. No, that's just you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, no, so that there was uh, people who know they aren't saved. I think that's the one you're talking about. I know I'm going to hell if I die today. There's lots of people like that. that they're very sure. They're assured they're going to hell. And they know it. Uh, there's people who know that they are saved. There's people who are saved and they don't know it. Like David. And there's people who are... Um, who believe that they're saved, but they aren't. So that's the worst one. Okay, And where we know that is we get it from Matthew where it says, they, they came up to Jesus and they said, uh, you know, I did all this works. I casted demons out. I healed the sick. I, you know, I attended church every Saturday. I, you know, I gave my tithes. And what the heck? He didn't say that. I just threw that in there. But, but Jesus said, you know, I don't know you, man. So it's possible to be very spiritual and do spiritual things and do good things and still not be saved. So, you know, makes you think. And so whether JC and Elmer and David and Madi have, whether you guys have good reason to believe you aren't saved is the question. And whether Jesse and Josh believe they have good reason, maybe they think because they, you know, they study their Bible all week that they're saved. What about the week when you don't? I don't know. So, let's talk about it today. Um, when is somebody truly saved? At one point. I've asked this several times, but just refreshing. When they die. Okay, Jesse, uh, well, technically, yes. When when judgment day and you actually get saved, yes. But when when is when are you, like, sealed? Is it a done deal for God that you are going to be saved? Before your mouth expresses it. Jeez, man, that's tough. Impressive. All right, well, you're getting deep now. Um, okay, so we know God called us, you know, before the world was created. He already knew. But, uh, you know, we, uh, just biblically that we, um, we need to confess with our mouth and, uh, and believe in our heart that Jesus died and rose again. And at that point, the Bible is very clear that you're saved. I don't know if we all agree with that or not. Any other verses that might contradict it? Okay. Of course, there's the others where we read about the centurion soldier. He said, what do I need to do to be saved? He said, you and your whole household believe in Jesus and get baptized. And boom, they did it right then and there. Okay. What does one have to do to be truly saved? Confess your mouth. Okay. And believe in your heart. Hmm, where'd you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember what I talked about um, in in the history when we were talking about salvation. There was a time where the Catholic Church was do the dominant kind of religion denomination, and they were telling people that you had to. Um, you had to do certain things to have that assurance. You had to go through certain rituals. You had to um, pay, away. pay uh, for people who died and maybe were unsure. So there was things that you had to do very clearly written down to know that you're saved. And then Martin Luther came forward and said, that is not the case. And then they, he came out with five statements. Anybody remember? For a thousand points. The five somethings. Two of no. Solo Who? The five solas. Yes. Solo fide, sola gratia. So, solo. by faith alone, by grace alone. Um, and 
uh, the others alone, so I forget. <laughs> That's what he came up with. He wrote his 95 thesis and said, you guys are wrong. Ju you are justified. You're made right before God by faith alone. All right? The whole thing hasn't been squashed yet. We all still struggle with it. I struggled with it, still do, that faith alone isn't enough. You know, and obviously some of us do because we've all believed, we've all been baptized. What more do you have to do to be saved? What more is there? All right, so that's the question. All right, so today we're going to talk about false assurance. So we're going to determine whether um, Josh and Jesse are really just fooling themselves or is their assurance genuine? Good morning, you who it is. All right, I'm just going to do a little review because we already talked about this. The first false way to be assured falsely is universalism. And that's at funerals where you see it. Every, for some reason, somebody dies. Oh, they were so good. We will see them in heaven. May God have mercy. He's like, wait a minute here. All of a sudden, they're a Christian, you know, as soon as they're dead. And uh, that's the kind of the pervasive belief of universalism, that everybody's saved. Somehow, God is going to be merciful to everybody, which isn't true. At least biblically, it's, it's not true. That um, there are, not everybody is, God would like it for everybody to be saved, but not everybody is. All right, that's the first one. We already talked about it. That's the first one. The second one, which we started talking about, did finish, is called legalism or works righteousness, which is the big one. Um, and let me ask you guys this. Have you guys ever heard... Um, I hear this a lot, but you're saved if you try hard. Like, all you got to do is do your best, and you're good. And you're, you know, you're saved. I, I heard it a few times. Um, and I think about that. I'm like, hmm, is that all you have to do? Do your best. Is your best good enough? That's a question. Um, so, just to review on legalism, what is it? Anybody know? I wrote a definition, but maybe you have your own. What is legalism? Yes, sir. It's when you're, you pretty much make yourself righteous by the works that you, that you do. Yeah. So, and not by Jesus. Well. Right. So, you, in your, what you do determines your righteousness. And determines how confident you are. Not in Jesus alone. Alright? So I can only be sure of my salvation when I obey the laws of God. An example. Alright, so I was thinking about how could I make this more clear? So let me ask Julia a question. Julia, what is the most expensive thing in the world you want right now? The Make most up. expensive. Make Bigger than big. What do you want? <clears throat> For me? For you! This is power. <laughs> right now, we'll probably be like a car. What kind of car? You have a car. Like expensive, like a better car. Like what? Lexus? Ford Explorer? Ford F-250? Ford F-350? 4x4? <laughs> 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 I kind of want like a Porsche or like a Tesla. Ooh, Porsche or Tesla, killing it. Maybe a Porsche. Oh my God. Not a Maserati? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like All right, so anybody know how much a Porsche is? It's not very much. Not very much. Okay, shut up, Jason. I don't ask you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know. I would think like 50 or 60. At least. Yeah. So. Um, See, that's a lot for me. Maybe more. <laughs> yeah. All right. What uh, what would you be willing um, to do to get it? So all my makeup palettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? David, what's the most expensive thing you want right now? I want my house. house. How much? How much is that? Millions. Two hundred. A little bit under three hundred. A little under three hundred. All right. And you're gonna. What do you have to do to get it? Huh? What do you have to do to get it? Yeah. Work for it. You gotta work hard, right? Shoot, tell me about it. I'm slaving to try to pay off my dirt. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta work. It takes a lot of work. And you know what? You have to work the rest of your life, really. 
you get a you get a loan. What is it? A thirty year loan, and most of the time we put a, we take out equity and it makes it longer. So probably the fifty years you're going to end up paying refinance. Refinance it. You're going to be paying for this house that you wanted to buy. For the rest of your life, you're going to be sweating and toiling to pay that thing off. But we have to do it. There's no. I ain't going to be homeless. You know, we have to do it. So what are you willing to pay for? Anybody else? Anything very valuable? Josh, what do you want? The most expensive thing. Don't settle. We need some high stuff. Expensive thing. Mm-hmm. What is your Range Rover? How much is your ring that you're going to buy? Oh, a Range Rover. Oh, a ring? Nah, that's paid. Oh, same <laughs> uh, no, but that was just your. Uh, don't you have two rings? Yeah. Oh, no, she'll real? have two rings. You guys are not like rubber. Like, ah, rubber. okay. <laughs> You're getting a tattoo. Yeah. All right, well, you want a Range Rover. So, the most expensive things we want is Range, a Range Rover. We got a Porsche. We got a house. Anybody else top that? Mm-hmm. Airplane. <laughs> Trump Tower. Do you? Who? Do you? Shoot. <laughs> Priceless. Um, all right. So, you know, we see what we're willing to do for something. But what if you, what if eternal life was on the table? What would you be willing to do for it? Give up everything. <clears throat> what would you be willing to do? I mean, uh, for a house, we'll work 50, 30 years. I'll pay thousands a month. Um, you know, every day I'll go to work. I'll, I'll do that so that I can have that. You know, we'll go to the gym so that we can look good. It's been a while. But, you know, we spend money on makeup so we look better. What If eternal life could be yours, you have 70 years here to live, maybe 80. And if you knew that you could live forever, what would you do to get it? Except Jesus. Hmm. Wouldn't you want to, like, do something, though? Like, uh, is, doesn't it feel too easy if somebody just gives it to you? I don't know. felt like that for me. But what would you be willing to do? What would you be willing to give up? How much would you be willing to pay? If eternal life was at stake, would you pay $10,000 a month? you probably say, <laughs> I'll just die. I'll die. What would you be willing to... Uh, yeah, if, it, if that was on the line. And, and legalism, the whole point of it is that God is, God is, this is a gift from God given to us. There's not a thing you could do to ever earn it. Welcome, come on in. Welcome. I'm here. All the way from the <laughs> islands. <laughs> We're going to fill you scholars in real quick. We're talking about um, we're talking about false assurance. Three ways to be falsely assured. I asked everybody in this room how many people knew if they were to die today they're saved. And there was two out of six who were sure. And uh, maybe more now. <clears throat> so we're wondering if the two people have a, have, are truly have the, the right... If they really are saved or whether they're just fooling themselves, and they're going to die if their plane goes down and then we'll never see them again. So, the first one was universalism. A- Abigail, you know what that is? What is it? Who? <laughs> oh. Do you know what universalism is? <laughs> and how do you know what it is? What it's a belief in universalism. She said the right answer. <laughs> what did you say? All ways lead to God. All roads lead to God. All ways lead to God. Correct. Okay. And now we we're saying the first one is that it, it seems that every funeral, for some reason, everybody turns into a Christian when you die. Oh shoot! He, he's going to heaven. Thank God. You know, have mercy on him. Wait. What about the rest of his life? Um, so that's universal. And the second one is legalism, which I think most of us fall into or have fallen into. And if you haven't, maybe you're in it right now and you don't want to admit it. And we don't know. But I asked everybody, what's the most expensive thing you want to buy? Hannah, what is the most expensive thing you would buy, you would want to buy that maybe can't afford? Hmm. A house. Yeah. 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 Y
Fiona, if you beat her to it, you can say something. Hospital. You want to buy a hospital? Ooh. Impressive. Yeah. Billions. Yeah. <laughs> Fiona, any, what do you think? The same thing. A hospital. <laughs> 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 Most expensive thing. <laughs> All right. If you were gonna buy a hospital, how much do you think you'd have to pay to, a month to get it? Or, or what is a final payment? My my soul and yours. It'd probably be like hundred million, maybe, to get a hospital functional. Maybe just the building. Or who knows? Maybe like forty million. You know, and that's a coming month, a monthly payment of probably uh, fifty thousand, maybe seventy-five thousand a month. So to get your hospital, that would be your payment. And then I just asked everybody if 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 eternal life was on the line to purchase, <clears throat> you know, what what would we do to get it? If you could buy it, or if you could, if there's a way to earn eternal life. What would you do? Would you spend the rest of your life slaving in a cave, chipping out for gold and diamonds to pay the master? Coal mining? <clears throat> would you sell yourself as a slave? Or, I don't know, what would you do? And that's the question because salvation is on the line and it's offered to everybody. And legalism is the idea that you can earn it. And we will spend the rest of our lives working to earn it and working in different ways um, and for some of us it's the laws you know I will be super strict with the laws because I want to earn that salvation can you earn it is it possible no. anybody uh, let's let's read this verse in Philippians 2 uh, I want to show you guys something Philippians 2 3 to 4 Philippians 3, sorry, 2 to 4. <clears throat> All right. Here it is. Verse 2, watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. For we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. All right, that's verse 3. All right, so Paul's talking, he's saying, beware of those people who mutilate the flesh, who, you know, beat themselves, or just, just, um, yeah, beat themselves up to try and earn salvation. He says, for uh, we, we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in in human effort. All right, and listen to this, verse 4. Though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could. Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. And then he goes on to what he did. And let's just read it. It's verse 5, it says, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. Anybody here ever circumcised at that point in time? Well, according to the law, that was, that was, that was the law. You had to do it. And he said, I was, I did it the first on eight days, you know, beat that. Um, I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew, Hebrew if there ever was one. So he's saying, even in my blood, I'm pure. Um, I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. So I don't know what I would compare that to today, but someone who demands the strictest obedience, you're kind of like a nun. Or, or like a, like a, a priest who you know lock themselves in a uh, sanctuary you know and just devotes themselves to God. Uh, <laughs> I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church, and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. All right, I did not fail. He was so good at obeying the law, he didn't fail. Yeesh. I once thought these things were valuable. But now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you guys caught that. I once thought that all of that stuff, my pure bloodline, you know, Elmer probably thinks because he's pure Mexican. <laughs> he's special. <laughs> Which he is. <laughs> but that's what Paul thought. He said, I, I'm from the same lineage as Abraham, you know? I'm from his, well, Benjamin, who is Benjamin from? Jacob. Abraham back down, but I'm, I'm right through from the beginning. I've got that blood. And I said, I, and I obeyed the law to the fullest. And he says, I, I used to think these things were my confidence. But now I consider them worthless. Yes, everything else uh, worthless because of what Christ has done. Verse 8, it says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. And this, listen to this ending. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Alright, so with all of that being said... Pretty much is what he's saying is that eternal life was on the line and I thought I could earn it. And I did the very best. Better than anyone ever could. Better than Kim can ever imagine. Kim, do you have any Jewish blood in you? Are you a tribe of Benjamin? Joseph? At least Judah. <laughs> Judas? Judas. Oh, man. You got to at least have some Jewish blood in you. Not a lick, girl. Nothing. I don't think any one of us do. And, uh, you know, has any, again, anybody circumcised on the eighth day? You know, not me. Still counting. All right, <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. All right, hey, look, it's in the Bible. I didn't mean to offend. Sorry. All right, and, and, and what about the law? Has anyone ever reached the pinnacle of law keeping to, to have a, at least one day never broken a thing? I slept the whole day. <laughs> yeah, it was a day when I was sick and I was in bed all day. <laughs> all right? So it, is anyone ever... Nobody has reached that point. Paul did. And he got there. And he stood on the mountain and he said, What the heck? You know, I all of this is trash compared to what Jesus did. And to know Him. And he understood it. He said, I know that the way to be righteous is through trusting in Christ, believing in Him. And that's written all over the Bible. But for some reason, we want to earn it. And that's the whole point of legalism, is that <clears throat> the second way to be falsely assured for people in this room or wherever to be confident, yes, I know I'm saved, is to believe that you're saved because you're really good. You know, there's people like, you know, who, who do you think is the greatest... Uh, who helps charities the most in the world? Any know of any big charity givers? Leonardo DiCaprio. How did he do? He does a lot for the Sea World. Dang. He helps NFL. Marine life. NFL. Akon. Akon. I heard that. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, he did that too. <laughs> yeah, what, you know, Bill Gates. What do they? They okay. help cure malaria, I think, and or <laughs> get, like Christian. almost in Africa or something. Him and his wife. They donate lots of money. I mean, more than any of us would ever earn. And, uh, you know, is, is, is being extremely good enough to get into heaven? Enough to be saved? You know? Even though it's, you know, the goodness maybe completely destroys our goodness. But I think that's a belief. When someone sits on a dying bed and they said they were a good person, are they going to be eternally secure? And I think that's the question we have to ask ourselves is, do you think you're eternally secure because you're good? Because if you think you are, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story, I don't know if you guys know the story, of the rich man in the Bible, the young rich ruler. He comes up to Jesus and he says, hey, what do I have to do? Or what does he say? Yeah. What, do I, what must I do to be saved? Yep. To inherit eternal life. To inherit eternal life. And uh, and then, oh, well, he says, good teacher first. And mm -hmm. Jesus says, hey, nobody's good, just God. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jesus <laughs> says, well, keep the commandments. And he says, 
I kept them since I've been young. You know, I grew up. I'm, I'm, I'm Jew. I'm good at this. I've done it. So, well, let's see then. Well, how about you sell everything you own and give it, give it to the poor and come follow me. Can't do it. Yeah, he couldn't do it. So he, he obeyed the Ten Commandments and all the other commands flawlessly. But it wasn't enough. He said, what do I have to do to give you eternal life? He said, well, you did everything. And then he called, you know, and I think the kicker was that um, I just heard the other day, is he called G Jesus good teacher. He thought that you could be good by obeying the law. And that's not possible. The goodness only comes, righteousness only comes from one thing, and that's trusting in Christ. And, uh, you know, at that time he hadn't died, but um, that's where he was going. So... The whole issue is that you guys are going to be, you know, you guys are Christians. Julia has been on the road for two or three years now. Um, you know, she's small and cute, so she's working her way. <laughs> has nothing to do with it, I guess. But, you know, for some of us, we've been at this for a long time. You know, David grew up in the church. <clears throat> Siona grew up in the church. Grew up in the church. Abigail grew up right in it. Most of us, JC, didn't. You were in the Catholic church for a while. You know, Elmer grew up in the church. We, we are just, it's in us to think, I just got to be good to be saved. Which is, you know, it's not true. They we're taught so much, just stop doing this, stop doing that. No. But we're missing the whole point, is that there's only one way, and that's Christ's sacrifice. Trusting in His blood. Sacerdotalism. Anybody ever heard of that? R.C. Sproul made it up. Saucy. All right, so it's a belief that salvation occurs after a ritual act or formula. Can you think of any ritual acts or formulas in 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 Christianity today that might give somebody confidence? Baptism. Baptism. How many people here that oh, are you saved? Yeah, I've been baptized. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most of us too. You know, how do you know you're saved? Well, I got baptized. You know. And it's, I'm not saying that that is wrong, but but there is some, there could be, it could be. What other things? Any anybody who grew up in the Catholic Church, what kind of rituals go on in there that give you confidence or assurance? Repentance. Repentance. First communion. First communion. Confirmation. Confirmation. Yep. Um, Baptism as a child. Yeah, baptized as, as a child. Um, some sacraments, you know, maybe confession. confession. You know, I'm I haven't been a part of it, so I don't know. Um, but there's things you go through. I heard one of the guys here, Robbie. He said he's he was in that, he, and they said you know you go through a series of of ritual things, like you know you go through first communion, you go all these things. I don't know the order. My mom did it when she was young. You go, you do these things, and then hey, you're in. You're safe. Yeah. Be on your way, you know, and and uh, and that's how we think. Or maybe I join a church, so I go regularly now, so I'm I'm in. And we can have a false assurance because we're trusting in the act, we're trusting in the um, in the ritual, we're trusting in that more than trusting in Christ, and that's where you get it wrong. Is that if Elmer today is so scared, I'm going to hell if I die. If for some reason I'm welding a car and thing blows up and I die, wash me, please. You know, jump in the water. And he's all his confidence is in the water of the baptism. I don't think you're saved because your confidence has to be in one thing alone, and that's Christ and His work. You have to believe that His He shed His blood to forgive you. And there's not a thing you can do. All right, let me ask you guys some questions. Uh, let's see, I was going to read them. No, we don't have time for that. Um, all right, so let me ask you this. What's the point? Okay, what's the point of, of uh, just reading these ways to be falsely assured? Um, there's no substitute for the complete faith in the finished work of Christ. So... Uh, each one of us has to take a deep look into ourselves and to say, am I fully trusting in Jesus? There was a time where I, I felt I wasn't. I knew it because I it hit me. I was like, man, I'm really trying to be good. You know, and, and um, just so you guys know that, 
growing up, I felt like I was that good person. Even though I wasn't, I know now. But, you know, I didn't, around, I grew up in a, in a gang neighborhood where everybody was smoking, drinking, cussing, sleeping around, gang banging, um, uh, everything, stealing. But I wouldn't do none of it. Not a lick. I wouldn't even smell that marijuana if it came close. <laughs> nope, no, can't do it. <laughs> nope, you want to drink? Nope, I don't, my lips are pure. <laughs> and that's how I thought I was saved because I was so good. That's what I thought. But it, it all hit me one day that I still felt empty. And that's where you could reach the pinnacle of righteousness and still have no peace inside. Because only because when you're bad, it's gone. When you're bad, you lose it. You know, when you're good, you got it. When you're bad, you lose it. So it's like every day is just a new thing. And, but true assurance is knowing that I am saved. Uh, John three sixteen. Anybody know it? For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall be saved. If you believe. In him you shall be saved. And that's what we're kind of working through. And the other ritual that you could do is you think that just because you raise your hand and walk up, maybe you think you say, well, I, I, I raised my hand and I, walk, I confessed it. But again, are you trusting in the act or are you trusting in your sincere faith? And you're trusting in your the confession of your heart. Um, so here's something work. Works righteousness equals legalism. All right, when you trust in what you do, attending church, coming here, coming to class early, two minutes early, I'm saved because I ain't never missed one, you know? Or that you have faith in Christ's work, and that equals righteousness or salvation. So it's trusting in your own or it's trusting in Christ's. You can't have both. It's one or the other. Paul trusted in his and he said, I will trade it all for Jesus, you know, what he did. And we have to get that kind of to that point. Um, anybody have any questions, comments before we keep going? Hmm. So anybody think of anything that, that maybe you're trusting in? But it took a while for it to hit me. It took a long time. Um, but uh, I think this is the point. Um, when we, when do we rely on our own works? When do we rely on our own works? Why? Sorry. Why? Okay. <laughs> I was I was thinking about that. Sorry, dyslexia. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Is why why does it even cross our mind to think that we could earn it? <laughs> why does it why does it even why do we even think it's possible that we could ever earn salvation? If it were to be able to be purchased, is there a price tag on it? Is there a uh, a certain amount of goodness you could do to get it. You know, there isn't. Why do we think we can earn it for some reason still? It's probably because of the way we're raised. When you're raised, like your parents unknowingly teach you to earn things throughout your life. Like if you're bad, then you don't get what you want. Yeah. 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 yeah, just the society in general. <clears throat> like you have to work for everything you do. Mm. Like, right. Things aren't just given to you. Right, yeah, getting something for free is tough. It's tough, you know, especially for Mexicans, you know. We want to work for everything. No, no, I, I can't take that. <laughs> you know, I'm like that, you know, no, I owe you big time, you know. I'll pay you back, or, you know, we just can't take it. But um, why do we rely on our own works? And that, like you said, I think, you know, our, our, the society kind of grains that in our mind. Maybe even from our religious leaders at some point taught us that, or parents taught us that, and it's stuck in there. I know my parents did, even though my dad may not have known it, was, hey, you got to go to church every Saturday, you know, and I started thinking that my salvation depended on it. But um, the re I, here's what I think. The reason why we think we can earn it is because we, we do not comprehend 
how filthy and wretched we are. We, yeah. we don't get it. We still think that it, we have some impact of we can do some good stuff. We don't, we don't fully understand how sinful and, and um, unworthy we are. And I think that just understanding that God himself, there was nothing in the universe that could cleanse us but God himself died. You know, that was it. And that's, the, that's like the greatest thing is himself having to die and shed his blood. Um, so it was so bad, so bad, that God had to die, you know, to save us. There's not, not, there was no monetary value, there was no gold, there was no certain amount of people on earth. He could have killed everybody, it would not have been enough. Could have made everybody suffer in cages for the rest of their life, would not be enough. You know, kind of like uh, Monsters, Inc., you know, where they scream and all the energy goes up, you know. <laughs> For us to suffer and obey the laws, it would never, you know, it would still be a little tiny, little worm. And uh, I think that's where it all lies, is we, we haven't reached true repentance to realize that we're, we are just helpless. And when you get there, you realize uh, it's you alone. I've got nothing else. Like where Paul said, everything I had, my Jewish bloodline, my obedience to the law, my memorization of the Old Testament, I'll trade it all. Give me Jesus. And that's, that's, that's it. And uh, to, to, to have true assurance, you need to get there. And maybe some of you guys, again, there's four types of people we talked about. There's people who know they aren't saved. People who know that they are saved. Like two people here, three. There's people who are saved, but they don't really know it. You know, like David in the back, we asked him, you, are you, you know, he was maybe a little unsure that he's really saved. He said, why the heck would you fly in a plane that could go down then, you know, over to Tennessee? I don't know. Um, and there's people who think they're saved, but they really aren't. And I would hate to be in that category. I'd rather be at least in the saved, but not really sure. And the only way to be sure is to ground yourself into something that is, and that's in Jesus. You know, do not, do not place all of your confidence and weight on your actions. So, Kim, for the rest of your life, you know, you have, what, you're almost 30 now? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can choose to, you can choose to trust every morning when you get up, or every night when you go to bed, you can choose to say, I'm, I'm so saved. Because I went to church this weekend, or I read my Bible, you know, welcome, and or I I didn't do this, but you can have full assurance that I every single one of us, the Bible says, when do you know you're saved? For God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son that whoever, no matter what race, believes in Him, will not perish but have eternal life. But if you deny Him, you're condemned already. Seventeen. So if you reject him, there's no other way. That's crazy. All right. So here, here's uh, something. Just as we finish, here's something I, I was thinking about. Uh, just in legalism, and this is uh, rated R stuff. Uh, does sex always equal love? No. no. You can get raped. That ain't love, you know. Or do it for other reasons. Um. You. No, it isn't as you. <laughs> <laughs> but true love plus sex is love. All right, that is or commitment. True love with commitment, and then place sex in there. That's love. But you can't have the act alone be love. You know, you have to have. Your heart commitment in there. So the act doesn't always equal love. You know, it's the act plus your love. You know, that's love. Um, so, I don't know if I said it right, but thinking about Christianity is the act doesn't always equal saved. Baptism doesn't always equal saved. Uh, law keeping doesn't always equal saved. It's, it's true faith plus all this is saved. You know, true true faith 
is saved. And then all of that just happens. Um, true surrender and faith. Get baptized, then you're saved. You can't have one without the other. You can't have baptism alone. Okay, I'm saved. And I've seen a lot of people get baptized in my life. Every time somebody gets baptized, I should be really excited. But sometimes I'm like, man, I shoot. I've seen so many, you know, get in and just never change, you know, and it's it's tough um, to to maintain that. But baptism is a result of something already going on. So, again, for people in this room or people watching at some point, you know, just to think about the the, the critical part is your your heart. That's why in Romans nine it says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you're saved. The other verse that says, get baptized, they just assume you believe. It's not like the act saves you. So, um, next week we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to probably end the whole thing, we're going to talk about uh, how you can know, how you really, what are some signs that you really know. Uh, but we know what you if you want to know that you're not saved, anybody here wants to know that you have false assurance, it's that you trust in your what you did. You trust in your baptism. You trust in your confession. You trust in your church attendance. You trust in your not cussing. You trust in all of this. Or you trust it that um, the, the, the works, you know, your obedience to the law, if you're trusting in that, that's, that's not true faith. That's, that's some other gospel. Because there's only one. In, in Galatians it says that there's no other gospel. It's Jesus, the good news that He saves us. There is no other way. So, <clears throat> that was the whole point today, is just to kind of get a look at ourselves. And that salvation is free. Ephesians 2.8, you memorize that. By grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of your own doing, no, so that no one can boast. You know, just because... Um, Siona has Islander in his blood, and we don't. I don't know. It's just, I, just, <laughs> I just want to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's by faith. That's it. And again, I I had to. Oh, I, that's what I was going to do. I forgot. But I'll do it next week. I was going to show you guys an example of something, but. Um, you know, it's like it's like you're handcuffed behind your back, and then uh, you know God says, "Okay, uh, eat the yogurt, eat that. Uh, you know, feed yourself the yogurt, but your hands are tied. You know, there's no way to do it. You have to trust somebody else, and that's it. There is no way for you to be saved ever. Try, go ahead, Elmer, continue. You know, for everyone here who's not sure, there's only one way to be sure: is that you just jump on Jesus, say, "Hold me." That's it. There's nothing else you could do. And from then on, I'll follow you. You know, so uh, this is this is like class number nine in, into this whole thing. And next week, we're going to hit the last one. So the whole point is for us to really talk about or to, to just figure out whether we're saved or not. Do we really know? So I hope next week, every single one of you says, yeah, me. You know, but we're still fighting it. So trust in Christ. Uh, and then, we'll, you know, that's today we'll... You know, hopefully as we just attend church, we'll get some more of that. So, uh, that's it for today. Let's pray. If anybody wants to be, you know, help teach or anything like that, be part of the team. Come talk to me. We're taking people. Uh, you have to be good looking. So. <laughs> <laughs> the rules allow you out. <laughs> just kidding. All right, let's pray.